Safety tip number seven is uh, a recommendation to use lidocaine with epinephrine uh, in a single commercial vial rather than using lidocaine and epinephrine from separate vials. Uh, and my suggestion is that most people use lidocaine with epinephrine prepared in a single bottle. Uh, this is a this contains 30 ml of lidocaine, but you can purchase 50 ml vials of lidocaine with epinephrine 1%, and that could be used to be placed inside the bag, the IV bag, uh, for preparing tumescent lidocaine anesthesia. <clears throat> Alternatively, you can use uh, just plain lidocaine and then add uh, epinephrine. So here's these little vials, one milligram of epinephrine, and this is 50. Uh, milliliters of lidocaine or 500 milligrams of lidocaine. So two of these 50 ml vials will contain one gram, 1,000 milligrams of lidocaine and one milligram of epinephrine can be placed inside the bag for tumescent anesthesia. But if you, if for some reason, and this has happened, the person who's mixing the bag of tumescent lidocaine puts the lidocaine in but forgets to add the epinephrine as a separate uh, addition, then the lidocaine it has no epinephrine and the rate of systemic absorption of lidocaine will be greatly accelerated and, can, and then it can actually become dangerous and uh, potential toxic levels of lidocaine, serum lidocaine levels can be achieved. So <clears throat> as a safety measure, I recommend lidocaine with epinephrine be used. Um, We have uh, often used, uh, patients are often given more than one liter of tumescent lidocaine. So you will have two or three or more bags of lidocaine, tumescent lidocaine anesthesia. Each of those should be numbered. And, and also each of the vials that are used should be placed in, in orders uh, on a counter that can be easily seen. So we will have, for example, a row of bottles uh, of lidocaine with epinephrine uh, and if we had three liters of, of saline of saline used for tumescent lidocaine anesthesia then we would have three rows of these vials that were empty so that at any point in time I can look over the counter and see that yes there are three rows of vials that are empty so that actually was placed in an IV bag and I know exactly what was placed in there. There's a bit of a danger if this is prepared out of the operating room because you can't see it and it's even more of a danger if it's prepared say in a central pharmacy because you have no idea what the pharmacist put in there. Uh, usually they'll, they'll hopefully they'll be accurate 99.99% .99 of the time but that one time where there's a mistake you will have no way of knowing what was actually in the bag and it's a bit, uh, it's a bit disconcerting not having that security. Um, I do know of one event that did happen uh, in which the, the tumescent lidocaine was prepared in a central pharmacy and instead of using one milligram of epinephrine, 10 milligrams of epinephrine were used and the patient had a, a cardiac arrest. They survived the event, but it was an unnecessarily traumatic experience for everybody involved. So it's nice to have it prepared in the OR. Uh, <clears throat> the last thing is bicarbonate. We use bicarbonate in each of the each of the bags and this is to reduce the pain, the stinging pain of infiltration of tumescent lidocaine. Commercial vials of lidocaine such as this are have an acidic pH and the purpose is to to give better half-life for the epinephrine. Epinephrine will denature itself uh, in, in neutral pH within a matter of weeks. So the shelf life is not very good unless it's in an acidic environment. Also, an acidic environment improves the solubility of, of lidocaine and other, uh, other similar local anesthetics. So <clears throat> putting in 10 mil equivalents of bicarbonate in each bag decreases the burning sensation that can be associated with tumescent local anesthesia. By decreasing that uh, burning sensation, you can minimize the need for any other ancillary uh, sedatives and or analgesics. 
<clears throat> in our in our office, in our surgery center, we do not give patients narcotics or, or heavy duty IM or IV uh, analgesics. It's not necessary. We infiltrate very gently and carefully and do not require any other medications. But if you don't use the bicarbonate and it stings, you're forced to give patients other medications just to overcome that. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Klein. Thank you for watching this informational video.